Hey, it's Josh Tom, and welcome back to another video. Hold on. We're talking about drones today. Drone shots. I love them. You love them. Everyone loves them. Everyone sees them. They go, ooh. Ah. Here at the studio, and especially on our travels, We've done some pretty cool droning. Like the sequence you saw before I sat down. Did you notice? I bet you didn't. Well, I bet you did, but maybe you didn't. One of those shots was fake. Yeah, you might have noticed. I mean, you know, it's not the perfect best ever solution ever. But if you didn't notice, it means that it's pretty good. Indeed, this shot is fake. Made on Google Earth. What? Do you really think that we took this drone, that we flew it like 10,000 meters above Hong Kong? Are you crazy? Of course you didn't, we took it into Google Earth Studio. What is Google Earth Studio, you may ask? And I'm amazed that I haven't seen this on YouTube before. Google Earth Studio is like Google Earth X, After Effects, X, Premiere, or whatever your editing software is. It allows you to take all the greatness of Google Earth, include some pans, tilts, 3D action of the entire world or other worlds. That's, that's another feature. Render them into individual photos, which you can import into your editing software and turn it into video. Now, everyone's seen the GTA map effect where it's like you're standing in one place, you do it, you move, you go up in the sky, it's flying, and then you go back down to the other. Now you can do that without After Effects. You can do it on your internet browser. It is that easy. So I figured I'd try it out. I figured out. I'll give it a shot. So this is my attempt. Not bad. But you notice that watermark on the bottom. Now that thing, that thing right there, don't worry about it, I've got a workaround. Another thing is that I'm Canadian and it's pretty illegal to fly a drone here without the regulations, without the flight records, without altitude, without checking, right, right, licensing, whatever, getting air registered, traffic, protocols, procedures, no, flight records, controls. submitting forms, know. listening to a radio to ensure that you're not in used airspace. Or you could just fake all of that. Just fake it. Who cares? On Google Earth studio let's jump into it now one quick thing before you get into google earth studio is that you need to sign up and in order to sign up you need to actually submit an application it only took me two hours to hear back on my application which is like nothing so after you send that you'll get it back you'll get an email you get verified boom bada boom you're in the program so here we are in google earth studio and we're gonna press blank project. Get all of these settings as if we were setting up a sequence in our editing software. So I'm going to name it. I'm going to say drone fake world. This is what I was talking about before. Definitely on earth. Our dimensions. Now this, this is where we're going to beat that watermark that's in the bottom corner because we're going to film in 4k or we're going to record in 4k so we can crop in we can punch in and then we won't see that watermark anymore so the way that we do that is we make our settings 3840 so then it's going to expand that into a 4k bounding first i'm going to set my frames per second and i always do 24 just because that's how i record my videos that's how everything else on my timeline is going to add up so i'm going to do 24 frames a second go ahead and hit start and then you're going to see the world. It looks pretty cool, you know, you can zoom in. Oh, look there, Africa. Okay, looking pretty cool, nice. So the first thing you do is just look up in the world wherever you wanna shoot. One of my favorite places that I've ever traveled to is Singapore. I have videos on it if you wanna check, check the link in the description. So I'm gonna look up Marina Bay Sands in Singapore and we're gonna do a drone shot over top of the Marina Bay Sands, which would totally not be allowed, totally illegal. I don't even think that I would ever try that. Boom. All I do is look it up. And one thing to note is that the resolution when you're looking around on the globe isn't gonna be as good as your exported product. When you export the product, it's gonna take a long time, it's gonna render that out, and it's gonna look 
really, really good. So I'm not gonna mess with any of the other camera settings. I'm just gonna kind of stay with the basic setup here. But the first thing you do is just set up where you want your shot to start. You can tilt the camera a little bit if you want some 3D action. Now you gotta remember, I'm shooting in 4K because of that watermark. So I wanna make sure that I pop out a little bit further than I want my shot to be. So that when I punch in, it won't be in the shot. So there, I kind of like the way that that looks. It looks pretty cool. Now what I'm gonna do is lock in those keyframes at the beginning of my timeline. So that means hitting these three diamonds. And now I'm gonna have five diamonds across my streak like that. That shows the beginning of the shot is ready, it's set. Now let's fly the drone. I move my timeline over to the very end, just gonna be one solid good movement. Then I'm gonna find my end point. So I'm kind of just gonna pan the camera a little bit, tilt it a little bit. Maybe I can tilt up a little bit more than I was like that. And then I can lock in those keyframes again by hitting those diamonds, making sure that on my timeline I have those diamonds set so we can see that motion happen. Now if I scrub through my timeline, I can kind of see the shot that I've set up for myself and you can actually just press spacebar and play that. Kind of looks like that. Once you're set up with the shot, you like the way that it looks, it's looking good to you, you're just gonna hit render. Your render setup, you can see the previewed shot, you can see how many frames you wanna export, if maybe you cut your move a little shorter. That last point is the attribution projection where you can place that watermark wherever you want. So let's say, you want to maybe crop in a little bit further on that far right, then you can put the watermark somewhere else. Now I'm not recommending that you don't attribute Google for these images. What I'm saying is if you want to slip it in a shot, I'm not saying to do that. I'm not saying to do this. Keep the watermark in there. Make it look good. Keep it in. So once I got all my settings the way that I want, I'm just gonna hit start. I'm gonna render that out. That's gonna take a long time to bake. The old render oven has gotta preheat, it's gotta see that shot, it's gotta bake it to golden perfection. And that's gonna take some time, but it's gonna be worth it. Once your shot is rendered out, it'll look a little bit like this. Now don't get me wrong, this is not the perfect setup. This isn't perfectly faking drone shots. Obviously, the real thing is always gonna get you a better result than faking it on Google. But it is a good workaround if you just wanna add a quick little jump. I've found that these work best with really, really high aerial shots where you can't see details as well. If this video helped or if you liked it, please leave a like on this video. Comment below how you're gonna use this effect in your videos. Of course, it's Josh Tom, and I'll see you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Fly your drone into that subscribe button. Smash, crash it even. Don't crash it. You're using, you're using new technology. You're not gonna do that anymore. But you can crash this, don't crash a drone. But if you are gonna crash, if you're gonna crash a drone, crash it into my subscribe button. Just hit it. Hit it straight on. DJI sparked that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.